been learning about soul for the last couple of weeks and now your brain starting to fry so you take a break go outside feel it under your feet oh my oh my well you know what you've been doing when you're feeding that fert just trying to make that grass green And then you find out all this time And you didn't really ever know That you've been treating your soil like dirt And that just ain't right Gotta feed that soil and everything will be alright You're gonna make that grass so much greener if you feed your soil There you go a little ditty for you. Thought you might enjoy that. I don't know, I just made it up on the fly. Kind of was feeling slightly inspired from all the uh, music activity that was happening as part of the GIE and, you know, now inspired by Ryan Orr to, Ryan Orr to make myself better. So, there you go, buddy. Um, hey, continuing on, Soil Series. I have a, a very special shirt on today. Um, hide and Seek, world champion, continues to be Bigfoot, I'm a big fan. Big fan of Bigfoot. Uh, here we go, recap. Covered nitrogen, covered phosphorus, CECs, OM. What on earth are we going to get into today? A lot of questions about calcium and magnesium. Now, there's been kind of a general uh, perception or um, uh, teaching that there, there are some ratios between cal and mag that should be honored. Uh, and and that, is, that is somewhat true. Um, but nobody, I guess, really breaks that down because, you know, sometimes it could say, well, you have 100 parts per million of mag, you have 500 parts per million of calcium, are we in the go zone? No, maybe we need to go up on that uh, in a 5 to 1 ratio, could go to 6 to 1, 7 to 1. You know, calcium is regulating an awful lot in this chain. Um, in heavy clay soils, uh, adding the cal to adjust pH and to move uh, the scale a little bit allows for a, a highway uh, and some space in the soil for your other nutrients to flow through. So you're creating a buffer zone. Now, for many people who sent in uh, soil samples to me, I, I gave a lot of calcium uh, recommendations, uh, some magnesium recommendations, some sulfur recommendations. I also gave the tips on which products uh, uh, from Green County and the next line to use. To continue the health and, and to grow the um, you know the carbon aspect and the organic matter and all of that. So uh, that that was what I was answering a lot of questions on those soil tests. So here we are in this CalMag section. I want to kind of run through this a little bit now. Granular fertilizers, uh, specifically mixed, um, you know, items with like a triple ten, uh, 1604, whatever whatever it is. Um, there is not traditionally 100% of that bag uh, would be usable material. There's quite a bit of filler that goes into those bags and, and that would be with some form of uh, calcium carbonate or, or something like that to fill the space to give you a full 50 pounds. So when they're sort of muting those other numbers to get things in there, uh, that's what they use to create space is this calcium product. So. Does that really do much for the soil or even contribute to the calcium load? I, you know, maybe, maybe a little. Uh, not necessarily for the soil, but it could change pHs. You could see some uh, rising because of that. You could see higher cal levels, um, and that could eventually tie things up if magnesium isn't kind of coming along with it. Now, magnesium itself is going to adjust pH the most. Whenever you add mag, that is sending things way higher than calcium will. But the two of them working together uh, tend to regulate an awful lot of things. And that would be your water and air and nutrient movement down in the soil, especially in tightly bound soils like clay. Flipping over into the sand areas. Now in Florida, we have an awful lot of uh, phosphorus um, in the soil. We have an awful lot of calcium in the soil. and not as much magnesium. So magnesium does get used a lot down there in lawn care programs. There's a lot of micronutrients uh, being put down with magnesium at the front and center. Um, the problem with that is 
because it raises pH so much, the soil pH down there is so high already, it's tying up all of these other elements and companies and homeowners are pounding lawns with iron to try to get color out of them just to fix that because the pH is so high, it doesn't really have anything else to pull from, so they're having to get this foliar iron. Now, in that scenario, if I've got this, either say magnesium is high and calcium is high, both of them, you know, we're gonna go in there with sulfur and with sulfated materials and start to work that soil to lower the pH. And the, the fastest way to do that is by getting more organic acids in there. And that again is gonna come from, what do I always talk about? Roots, I talk about roots, I talk about growing that organic matter and feeding the soil from underneath. So in other cases where you might have uh, high pH, low calcium, or high magnesium and high pH, we're gonna go in there with probably gypsum to adjust that because of the sulfur and that's going to help bring the cal into the soil and the sulfur into the soil and help to buffer that pH in a downward fashion and feed the calcium in to continue all of those other um, elements riding into the plant. And um, uh, Kinsey says uh, calcium is sort of the mule that all of the nutrients ride on its back to make it down into the plant. I think that's a pretty good analogy. It's doing a lot of work to help funnel things down into the plant. Now, is it doing most of the work? Eh, it all has to work together. No, but if there's a shortage there, then we have to fix it. That's the big deal. If there's a shortage, then we have to fix it. If there's an imbalance, we have to fix it. If I look at something and see there's an excessively high magnesium rate, we're gonna wanna feed it calcium. In those CEC numbers I talked about, those 100% saturations, we're gonna wanna feed the calcium and that'll actually shrink the magnesium. Or if they're both really high, we're gonna bring the sulfur in there and we're gonna to wanna to see that shrink and so maybe some potassium sulfate. We're gonna create those elements in building that robust soil system. Now, this may seem over the top for just somebody who's out there doing yard work, uh, you know, that doesn't really wanna to have to think about all this stuff. Like, ah, oh, this is just too much for me to consider. But that's fine, you don't have to do that. But what you should be doing is looking at what you put down on your lawn anyway. It, it's not just to set it and forget it. That, you know, that doesn't work with sprinkler systems. It doesn't work with fertility. You can't do it that way. You really need to examine what is going out and you vary your program. So just think this, always very varied. So you set things up to where I'm gonna go ahead and put nitrogen down this and some potassium. Now I'm gonna move over here into these micronutrients, I'm gonna do this. And you can do that just with off the rack material. You don't have to be a customer of mine by any means. This is general information for everybody. And, and pros out there, it's the same thing. If you stick to one item for too long, everything else will suffer. Now, one of the reasons that nitrogen was always kicked in as one of the most, you know, let's put that out there, is because in, in agriculture, in, in uh, nature, that was the element that was in short supply, so it was fed the most. Okay, well now we've done that. No, so we gotta go back to the other stuff and get back to the nurture. Nurture the nature and let it just grow. So, looking at those base saturations, looking at your CECs, figuring out where those calcium magnesium levels are and where they are in relation to each other. You know, you can have cal levels between 40 and say 80% depending on soil type and saturation and five to 15%, I, you know, I've seen higher on mag, but then we're getting out. I don't really want those two totals to equal more than 80% of your saturation in say sandy soils, uh, even in clay, but we might have a higher balance of one than the other. We might want more magnesium in the clay and less calcium. We're gonna get those base saturations to kind of come into play. So that's where the recommendations come from me to balance that system first and then the fertilizer you apply, whatever it may be, the soil amendments you apply have a wonderful pathway to travel down and make it into the plant, okay? So, so that's that piece that you guys have asked about. I'm gonna leave this one right there. Um, two reasons, my battery is dying, so I don't wanna cut. You know how I like to do one take. We do one take and we get this done. So that's where this one's gonna stop. Up next, next video, uh, I want to be talking about air and water, anaerobic and aerobic bacteria. Woo! And aerobic bacteria doesn't mean that they're out there working out, but it does mean that they're working faster. So, 
stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys all real soon. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the little ditty. Later. <laughs>